Welcome to episode 143 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we find a king who has a talkative daughter no one can silence until she meets the Ash Lad and the princess no one could silence. Once on a time, there was a king. He had a daughter who was so wayward and whose tongue went so fast that there was no stopping it. Therefore, the king promised that whoever could shut her up would get not only to marry the princess, but get half of his kingdom in the bargain. There were plenty of those who wanted to try. I can imagine a princess and half a kingdom doesn't come along every day. The gate to the king's farm did not stand still. The suitors came in herds from east and west, both riding and walking. But none of them could put the princess to silence. Finally, the king pointed out that those who tried but could not were to be branded on both ears with his iron. He refused to have people running around his courtyard for nothing. Then there were three brothers who heard about the princess. Their names were Pear, Pal, and Espen Ashlad. Since there was not much to speak of keeping them at home, they wanted to tempt their luck and see if they could win the king's daughter and half the kingdom. They were good friends, so they went off together. When they were well on their way, Ashlad found a dead magpie. Look at what I found, he shouted. <laughs> Where did you find that, asked the brothers. I found a dead magpie, he said. Yuck, throw it away. What do you want that for, said the two, who always thought they were the wisest. Oh, I have things to do, and this will do, said the ash lad. When they had walked quite a bit, the ash lad found an old ring of birch. Look at what I found, he shouted. Now, what did you find, said the brothers. I, I found a ring of birch, he replied. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Throw it away, they said. Oh, I have things to do, and this will do, said the ash lad. When they walked a while, he found a pottery shard and picked it up. Guys, look at what I found, he said. Now, what did you find, asked the brothers. A shard of pottery, he said. Huh, that's something to pick up. Throw it away, they said. Oh, I have things to do, and this will do, said the ash lad. When they had gone a bit farther, he found a crooked ram's horn, and soon after, he found another. Look at what I have found, he shouted. Now what? asked the brothers. Two horns, the ash lad replied. Throw them away. What are you doing with them, they groaned. Oh, I have things to do, and this will do, said the boy. After a while, he found a wedge. Boys, look what I found, he shouted. Unbelievable. Now, what did you find, said the elders. I found a wedge, he replied. Uh, throw it away. Why do you need all this junk for, they replied. Oh, I have things to do, and this will do, said the boy. When they crossed the fields by the king's farm, where they had just spread fresh dung, he bent over and picked up an old, worn-out shoe sole. Wow, guys, look at what I found, he said. <laughs> if only you found some sense before you arrived, the two said. What did you find now? A worn-out sole, he answered. Ew! As if that's something you need to pick up. Throw it away. What do you want it for? Said the brothers. Oh, I have things to do. And this will do. If I'm to win the princess and half the kingdom, said the ash lad. <laughs> yes, you sure look like it, said the two mockingly. 
And so they went to see the princess, first the eldest. Good day, he said. But good day to you, she answered and turned in her seat. It sure is warm in here, he said. It's warmer in the coals, answered the princess. The branding iron was lying there, ready to be used. When he saw that, he couldn't say a word, and he failed. It didn't go much better with the second brother. Good day, he said. A good day to you, too, she said, and turned in her seat. It's very warm in here, he said. It's warmer in the coals, she answered. Then the cat's got his tongue as well, and the iron was pulled out again. Then it was the ash lad's turn. Good day, he said. Good day to you, too, she said, and turned in her seat. It's nice and warm in here, he said. It's warmer in the coals, she answered. She did not care to be nicer to him than she was to the others. Then maybe I can fry my magpie there, he asked, pulling out his first find. I'm afraid she'll burst, said the king's daughter. Not to worry, I'll put this birch ring around it, said the boy. It's too wide, she said. I'll use this wedge, said the boy. The, the, the fat will drip out of her, said the princess. I'll hold this underneath answered the boy, showing his broken pottery. Your words are all crooked, said the princess. No, I'm not crooked, but this is crooked, answered the boy, and he pulled out one of the ram's horns. Now I've never seen anything like it, yelled the princess. Here's one like it, said the boy, and pulled out the other horn. You're trying to wear me out, aren't you, she said. No, but this is worn out, answered the boy, pulling out the sole. The princess didn't know what to say. Now you're mine, said the ash lad, and he got her and half the kingdom in the bargain. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.